Hey, hold on. Before we go any further, I dislike scammers. This right here is a scamming female. She's a scammer. She's a scammer. So to prevent her from scamming anymore, we need to get this Instagram out of here. I'm going to tell y'all the story in a story time in another video, like later down the line. But to make sure y'all hold me down and to make sure y'all got my back, because I know y'all do. I need Y'all see these three little buttons right here? Go to this page. Click these three little buttons. Report. Why are you reporting this? Report account. Uh, it, it should say more somewhere. It'll say more and then you put fraud and scam. She's a scammer. Get her out of here. But anyway, TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me. If we go live and you happen to miss it, this is where it will be. Um, highlights and things of that nature. Don't forget, we do got Patreon Monday through Friday. And we also got merch, you get me. And, hey, low key, I'm going to make it very easy for y'all. I'm going to leave the link to that Instagram in the description below, man. Plain and simple. Just go do it. I don't be asking y'all, let, but let's get negative. Get her out of here. <laughs> Police intercepted in season 200, two, season, this year's season, episode 14. What season is it on? I don't even know. Why they zoomed in? Oh, okay. Kicking off their Saturday night with an undercover op in the unmarked beach. Is it going to be like this the whole time? Through narrow streets on the... And that's fine, man, because you know what? We need a new episode anyway. That's all right. Saturday night with an undercover op in the unmarked Beamer are firearms cops Dan and Rob. So currently they're looking for all I don't think we've seen an episode period of this this year's season. They're in Sherwood. Right. Okay. Audi A3. It's linked to a male who's currently wanted. Is uh, a few days ago it's been reported that he's uh, drove in front of the victim, uh, produced a knife and threatened to kill him. He's uh, got various warning markers for violence and carrying a knife. Recent intel suggests the potentially dangerous wanted man is still carrying a blade. And the white Audi he's been seen driving has been on the road within the last hour. Okay, I see what's going on here. So maybe they got to record it like this and zoom in and zoom out the so they can get it on YouTube. This individual. Uh, he's got a lot to lose and he, he may try and uh, do everything to get away from us. To avoid spooking the driver, a fleet of plane cars are searching for the Audi. There is. Oh, that's it. Yeah. But there you Dan go. and Rob take the win, finding it parked up and empty. We're um, going to plot up on it with a bit of a uh, long view. That's an order. Stealth mode activated. Dan secures the perfect vantage point to keep watch from their plane car. We're going to be happy with the view. Yeah. We'll see the lights come on, won't we? While Rob rallies the rest of the team into position on the surrounding streets. I can probably suggest you park up the other end close to Bestwood Park Drive. Lights out. Stake out. As soon as they move off, we can uh, go into a follow. This actually makes sense how they posted it. Like... They're doing whatever they can to get that on there. This channel got a bunch of them on there. It's the, it's the first time I've seen it, their channel. Uh, with a view of getting a, uh, a preemptive box on it. Just a waiting game. We've got to have a bit of luck on our side that our subject comes back to the car. 
So we'll wait and we'll see what happens. An op like this is all about keeping a low profile. I love a good old classic steak out. What's he whispering? You're inside of the car. They can't hear you outside of the car. But Dan and Rob are so well hidden in plain sight, their look is about to take a knock. <laughs> Imagine being on a stakeout as a cop and getting backed into. Imagine the person that backed into them when they come out. Oh my. <clears throat> Are they in a no parking zone? Interceptors, the dedication is overwhelming. So, call the way down. In fact, he's attracting interceptors at a rate of knots. I'd like to check. Directly behind the suspect Audi is a black unmarked Volvo. They even got trucks? I never seen an interceptor truck. Like unmarked car. Like this like this is even in Florida they doing this. They got the Durangos, Dodge Durangos, Hemis, like unmarked. And I was like so shocked when I seen them at the gas station. I was like, oh y'all getting smart, huh? That's crazy. Moving into second place are fellow interceptors John and Jules in an unmarked beamer. Remember the public is out of the way, we are now directly behind you. I think you've got a third plane car behind us. And back in the game. Yeah, three in the stick. Are Dan and Rob. Plus another two cars behind for good measure. Man, y'all five, six deep for this? Five. All set. The plan is to box in the white Audi after the upcoming roundabout. Let me sit up a little, because that's why my back be hurting. Roundabout. On the roundabout. Not one, not one. Not two, not two. But it looks like the target is testing whether he's got company. Not three, not three. No, he's, he's got to do it. He's got to go here, isn't he? Once round the roundabout, <laughs> the exit but failed to stop. Close up, close up. As the lead car attempts to move in front for a box, the driver floors it in the high performance Audi. I guess they was right, because he ain't going. Shooting over pedestrian crossings and three roadworks. The dangerous driver rampages through the suburbs, hitting speeds of nearly 80 miles an hour. <laughs> the zoom-ins are crazy. Shake the convoy of interceptors. Like with the lead car, there's a stinger straight ahead. Is this not crazy to y'all? Like the view out of an SUV? It's, a, it's, a, it's even higher, right? Like we're used to watching like street level. Like it's like up and above and things of that nature. Like we, I feel weird. Swerving to avoid the stinger and nearly causing a head-on crash. The interceptors need to get the dangerous driver off the road fast. Oh snap, I didn't even realize that was going on. It not 
Nottingham, four intercepting units, including John and Jules. No, oh, it's, it's going to do it. It's got to go here. And Dan and Rob. Yeah, three of the state. Are pursuing a dangerous driver who's wanted for allegedly making threats to kill. Could be carrying a knife. And he's doing everything he can to escape the law. Guarantee when they catch him, he get out the same on bail with a suspended sentence as the sentence and like a fine crossing through traffic and forcing other drivers to slam on the brakes vehicle is squeezed through passing another vehicle to the other side the reckless driver is causing mayhem on the roads good ride good ride we're going to attempt to get a box on it when we can. Approaching offside junction with uh, Forum Road. So don't they need permission to do a high-speed box? Because, I, I mean, plus he's in, like, residential streets. Like, this is, how are they going to, they, they, right. they got to try to stinger again, don't they? Right, right, Forum Road, generally towards uh, the estate. It's a further right, 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 South Glade Road. Carving through narrow streets on the estate. Speed four zero. Think about that. Decamp, decamp. Approaching a further slow moving vehicle that's now moved out of the way. Speed remains four zero. There's no opportunity for a box. So it's doing a left, left, left from Leybourne, descending the hill down to South Lane, where it's a further left, left, left. And a right, right, right. This is going to be a decamp. It's in towards the leisure centre. Everyone knows which way this is going. Are you running boots? Bobby? I have got it, mate, don't you worry. But he's doing the RA at the top. And there's a D camp. D camp for the testing centre. Told you. D camp, D camp. Stay where you are. It's the slowest D camp. He had to make sure he had his wallet and phone. I really hope YouTube lets me post this. Not YouTube. I just really hope like I can post this, man. Cause this is, even though they have to do what they got to do to get this on here, like I haven't watched a new episode in so long. From John, I've had a good view across from the football pitch. He's not gone left at the end. He's potentially gone right onto Ridgeway. JV, are you holding here? Don't move him, mate. All right. All exits covered. The runner is left with nowhere to hide. That's it. Why is it? I don't know why, would it? Gav Hall skips the main prize in a street opposite the park. I was about to say, like, when did they plan on putting the man in handcuffs? Like, y'all having a whole conversation after a high speed chase, after a foot chase? Like, like. You know. Serious offences, you know, being dangerous driving, uh, driving at speed, putting loads of members of public at risk. But that wasn't the main focus of this. The main focus is to get this man off the streets because he's dangerous, he carries knives, he's been threatening people. We've achieved that. One arrest for, for what we've got. Man, y'all got that man off the street for the moment. He'll be out back again. Okay, looking for, we've got the man, uh, and he's under arrest, so great result. After searching the ditch dowdy, Gav and John found a large knife. Ah. The case was sent to Crown Court, where the man was convicted of dangerous driving and possession of a knife. He received a 12-month suspended prison sentence 
and was disqualified from driving for a year. No legal action was taken against him for the alleged threatening behavior and failing to stop. Bro, what was the point of all of this? What, what, like, tell me. You gave us a whole speech, um, Captain America. He got the Captain America comb over. The Captain, like, you gave us a whole speech talking about some, oh, we just want to get him off the streets. Y'all gave him a suspended sentence. Salute, though, to him. Congratulations on doing that. But, like, it's wild. Criminals are constantly evolving in a bid to fine-tune their trade and evade detection. I can remember years ago when I very first started in the job, one of the first drugs warrants I went on, the officer said to the subject, are you a pot man or a box man? Because back then, people always hid their stash in either some sort of jar or pot, or a small wooden box so you just have to find the pot or the box <laughs> uh, but yeah things have got a lot more sophisticated since then they can be really quite inventive okay so now what we're about to do we're about to go on that unearthing more than pots or boxes are the knife crime team on duty this evening Radford. and the team sarge matt we're at Radford Boulevard, so we'll go down towards Alfredton Road. Uh, not left outbound. A few streets away are Mike and Ken. Yep. Yeah, we're locking the noise off. We've beached our road, and we'll just have a bimble up to Aspen Lane in case he does pass us. The tight knit team are on the lookout for a familiar face. He's a cannabis dealer, very much kind of amongst the student realm target audience uh, so like we've had before I've, I've got a number of investigations for him that are pending a decision from the Crown Prosecution Service 17 months ago the knife crime team were the suspected dealer when a passenger legged it from his car Please, stay where you are clutching a bag of suspected cannabis give me the bag give me the bag both the runner you nicked him for you yeah no more yeah yeah and tonight's target were arrested on suspicion of dealing class b drugs and the suspected dealer's Corsa was seized. Tonight, there's fresh intel. It's thought the suspected dealer is changing tactics, upgrading to a brand new rented Mercedes to try and operate under the... Yo, once they catch you one time, they got eyes on you for the rest of the... until, like... You might you gotta move cities. You gotta relocate. Like the UK, like they got nothing. Like the police, like you know what I'm saying. Like there's not much to do. So they got like once they get you one time, they know you're dumb enough to try again. So they're just gonna wait. Teams radar. <laughs> Luckily for him, Team Knife Crime are all over it. The idea, I think, is the short of it. There is. There's only one way to find out if the intel is correct. Hello. How are you? Good Open door for us, Pat. Open door for me. That's right. Time for search. All right. Stinks of weed. Anything in the car, mate, you want to tell us about? No, 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 no. Someone told me you said dealing drugs for free, okay. Was there any drugs in the car? That's the work, yeah. You smoke. Well, I've been there, had this conversation before. He's saying there's drugs in the car. 
Estamos dizendo a mãe. Vamos lá. While Ken and Mike pat down the suspect, you smell very strongly of cannabis. Dan and the Sarge have a look at his new ride. Got that gas. It doesn't take them long to find what they're looking for. Probably an ounce of weed. Two lieutenant in the car, he's been about sending some pills to personal smoke. We know Talking about personal smoke, like, bro, you got a whole three pounds on you. Like, why are you traveling with that much? And like, you already got the, the like, you, they're already tailing you. They already know who you are. Take a seat in there, man. The suspected dealer passes a roadside drugs test, proving he hasn't recently smoked cannabis. So now you for show traveling. Having also found a load of cash in the car, he's back under arrest on suspicion of dealing cannabis. An investigation with the knife crime team rarely stops at the roadside. They're going to with the, the house. suspect destined for a night in custody, the Sarge plans to cast the net wider. He's become a bit more clever in his um, way diversify and every time we catch him he's obviously getting a little bit wiser to our tactics so we're now gonna get some uniformed officers to his home address which even now he's claiming he doesn't live at we've got a set of keys which i'm sure yeah that definitely means you got some stuff there but we'll fit his flat and then we'll see what we find so now we've got that string we need to just keep pulling and pulling and see what we uh, uncover but we know mr good for it because over the years we've had kilos and kilos of uh, class B off him he just hey at this point he got to retire start rapping or something with a hunch the suspected dealer could be hiding a stash of drugs the team are eager to take a look inside his flat Cash and communication devices are seized, but the flat is drug free. Smart man. With a firm grip on that strand, the interceptors aren't giving up easily. I think he's 50 here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the fob. Right. That one fits here. Well, I've no idea where those two and that one fit. Three keys on the suspect's keychain are unaccounted for. And the team think he could be trying to outfox them by running business from a secret lockup. I presume it's just going to be stuck at a border house or something. So they turn their attention to seeing if the keys fit out buildings near the flat. He's never given up. No joy. Ah, <laughs> let it go. Convinced there's a big stash under lock and key somewhere nearby, it's time for a bit of detective work. So we're happy that's where he lives. Maybe he didn't want us going there because we've seized probably about three grand in cash, I suppose, in total. And um, we found a what we believe is going to be a line phone because it's got loads of incoming messages, but it's pin locked. So we're going to get now go on to where he was first picked up to see if we can find any lockups or garages there that these keys might fit. So we just now uh, continue to pull that thread. I'm fairly sure there's no garages down there. The interceptor split up, combing the area where the suspected dealer was spotted. In Carver. Uh. I'm not even gonna lie, man. The level of <laughs> like getting pulled over by these dudes with any type of class A, B, whatever on you, they're not gonna stop. Like, dude, you went to my the crib, you searched all the, the outhouses by the crib, like, like go home. Go on to the next case. But no matter how many threads they pull, they don't find the missing piece of the puzzle. Time to channel their inner Sherlock's. 
Sherlock would have been. Don't disrespect Sherlock. He's saying none of those keys fit that gate. No. Damn shame. If only we'd seen him ten minutes earlier when he got out of the car and wandered off from there. Did you go out to this area? Yeah, there's no garage. There's no garage, it's just a field. Caravan. Caravan. Keith is it. Elementary Mike. What are we doing? We just kicking it? Like having a powwow, having a brainstorm? Or... Mike's favorite film is Ace Ventura Pet Detective. With five years on the force, his investigation skills may have just pulled to the final thread. Oh, caravan. Oh, breaking bad. Sort of hero they got. Out on foot, the caravan has a certain aroma, and it's not campfires and toasted marshmallows. Uh. We're getting a strong smell of cannabis around the caravan. It's kind of a corner, it reeks. God, yeah, it does. That's it. What are the so you're not supposed to have all your keys on the same ring, man. Chances one of the three keys will unlock the caravan door. 100%. Yeah. Either the dealer likes to holiday very close to home in sunny Aspley, or the team have uncovered his drugs den. I'm after another 18, please. Despite having Bro was this close to getting away, but they're so dedicated to doing their job, which is, you know, salute. They're doing their job, they're doing it, they did it well, they outsmarted you. Not how smart are you? They figured out what you were doing. The, key, the team have to wait for the official go ahead to set foot in the caravan. Mate, you could see a bag for life just, just hanging out. 100%. 100%. That is going to be loaded. Mate, the way this smells, it definitely smells like something in there. So now y'all Scooby Doo, pet detective. crime team have tracked down and arrested a suspected drug dealer. One bag of suspected cannabis was found in his car. But with three unidentified keys on his keychain, the team are convinced they could unlock a bigger stash hidden somewhere nearby. Sent 1080p. Interceptors leave no stone unturned and discover one of the literally not one stone was unturned. They didn't this is the most work I've ever seen police do in my life. Keys unlocks this caravan. Oh, Warrant authorized, it's finally time for the grand unopening. Mike does the honors. It's a bit of a squeeze, loads of weed, but it's well worth it. Oh, there's actually a full vacuum packed keyhole here. Look. There's large amounts of suspected cannabis and the remaining keys open padlocked storage boxes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Containing deal bags ready to be filled. And what looks like pre rolled individual spliffs. Oh man, the hood gonna be sick about this. It's all gone. He ruined this whole pack and probably don't got enough to re to to you know to re get to get back right. You got the scales in here, where he's obviously coming here, splitting it all up and then getting ready to do individual deals. In terms of pieces of a puzzle, it's all there, and that kind of hard work and taking that time with it, it's paid off now. Because for all intents and purposes, we've got a bit of the model, haven't we? In terms of you know, everything that a drug dealer needs, you know, that is kind of criminal business. So we're just going to get the ball, though. Yeah, put stuff in it. Definitely do that. I want to see a UK cop come to America for the first time and go to like Vegas or California. 
And just walk inside of a smoke shop and be like, oh my god, I can't believe it. We'll turn the caravan with the Volvo, won't we? No. I mean, that'll be a sign, wouldn't it? Stop! Not me! It is you! <laughs> caravan in the last time, Chief? Could be a spin off. <laughs> After a victory in the great outdoors, the team head back to the Nick to unpack. They walking in there proud. It's just full of empty deal bags, basically. We might have a thought process around all these deal bags, and we're probably looking in excess of a thousand there, are you? His objective is going to be to sell every one of those bags, uh, probably a minimum of ten pound a bag, depending on the size of the deal. So you're looking at potentially a ten grand worth of. No, incorrect. Those are for um, eighths, minimum eighths. Sales opportunities right there. That's why he's invested time, money, and energy in buying those fancy bags because they're going to be more attractive to a younger audience. And there's a final cherry on the cake. Oh, hang on. Well, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna guess about nine grand. Oh, nice. Dang, they didn't got about 15 bags off him. An unmeasured amount of weed. Man, they didn't got him. A gift that keeps on giving. Drug experts in fourth will do an equation to work out how much street value all this cannabis is worth. Once it is all weighed out and told to be cannabis sell, they'll come up with an estimation of how much it is actually. But a lot. Experts estimated the drugs seized from the caravan of cannabis were worth just over 16 and a half grand. The suspected drug dealer pleaded guilty to controlling counterfeit currency and possession with intent to supply. Oh, counterfeit currency. Cannabis. He now awaits his sentence. Oh, he was out there finessing and everything, huh? Coops and Rambo. Never met them before. Good luck. They're working with a Rhodes crime team to collar a suspect on the wanted list. Fifty pounds. Who stole fifty pounds worth of bacon? Ah, <laughs> y'all wanted a fry up so bad, didn't y'all? Multiple. <laughs> suspect he could be using his mum's car, which has just hit an ANPR camera coming into the county. Oh, we popped up here for that then. We are looking for a Vauxhall Mocker. Two, three, four, five shoplifting will soon build up. Everyone else has to pay for it, so it's on the border now. Hopefully pick it up and uh, meet them with a surprise. Having worked together for the last three years, Coops and Rambo have got a few things in common. They both like chasing criminals. And their special skill is sniffing out suspects. It's Rambo's special skill. The box on Mocker, please. Derby Road A611. Coops is behind the suspect's mum's car. Unknown amount of uh, occupants as the windows are tinted. And we're late. Yo, imagine being in your mom's car and making it hot. Like 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 going to go steal stuff in your mom's car. So now that's a vehicle to, of suspicion every time that she's in it as well. That's that's not that I don't know what part of the game it is, but that's bogus. <laughs> Before he stops the mocker, Coops needs backup. On the other side of the road, his Rhodes crime team cop down. Eight, six, seven, 
Mazda 6 4, no view of occupants when it passed me, Coops. No one knows if the suspect is travelling in the car. But they soon get a bit of the clue. And we've got someone out of the vehicle now. Two out. Please stop through the window. Stay where you are now. One of the two passengers makes a break for it. Stay where you are now. Please stop. Stay. Let's see your worst mistake. That man said, "Police dog." Listen, just chill. When that dog come out and you that close, you're not getting away. That's a German Shepherd with four legs. You got two, and you're a human. Stay where you are now. Get on the floor now. Mum's in the driving seat, and Rambo convinces her son, the suspected shoplifter, to stay put. Oh, wow. so wait, this is the mom's in the car? This is a family affair? Long enough for Dan to arrive and get him in cuffs. Just put your hands behind your back, mate. Leaving Coops and Rambo to concentrate on the unknown runner. Who's it there? who must have something they want to keep under wraps as they've made a beeline for Woodland. Please, we're done! Show yourself now! I said we're done! Fight! Oh my God, this is, this is a horror movie at this point. Tracking the runaway scent, Rambo will either bag the bloke himself or flush the runner out of the woods, driving him towards waiting cops. Rambo leads Coops out the other side. My buddy was running, running. It's really amazing what these dogs can do. Like, this dog literally just took him on a half a mile hike. They keep pushing forward until they got him. The passenger runs into the trap and is nicked by another unit. You better be happy you was nicked by another unit and not that dog. I'm doing our unmarked car. So they'd, they'd assume that the net's closing in on them. He knows the dog's coming. He's probably headed to the main road going, that dog's not going to come onto the road or... So, and that's what's caught him. It's just a, bit, it's just a team effort, so... Uh, they're pleased that he's got him, that we've got him, should I say. Um, it's given me some exercise and potential to fall down this hill, so a good day out. Wait a minute. Man, still ain't caught his breath. We out of shape. Heel, heel. Stand here. Custody. Dan's dropping off the wanted lad. He doesn't look like he's been bit, does he? He wouldn't be smiling if he'd been bit, would he? Absolutely not. And there's a brief reunion with the runner. A bonus find, who it turns out is also wanted for theft. Come on, we're straight in. No further action was taken against the man. Dan arrested on suspicion of theft and burglary. The lad who ran from Coops pleaded guilty to numerous shop theft offences and was given a four week suspended prison sentence, fined £162, and issued an exclusion order banning him from entering his local supermarket for 12 months. We well, got an exclusion order on him. You can't go shopping for 12 months? That's tough. Imagine. Yo, bro. Yo. Can you go to the store for me? You know I'm banned up out of there. You know I'll be stealing. You know I'm a thief. I can't even go in there. That's tough. From the mighty marked car to the stealthy unmarked, the interceptors have a fleet of high spec motors in their armory. 
Cause you telling me even in the 2023 versions they still talking about these cars? Like just chase somebody. I mind going out in the Evo marked or the unmarked. I mean, being out in the unmarked is, is nice because uh, you blend in with traffic uh, and you get to see how people drive normally. But when you're out in a marked car, it's a little bit different because what you're then looking at is people's reactions to you. Uh, you've just got to adapt slightly to, to what you're looking for. Early evening in Eastwood. As part of the knife crime team, Sergeant Johnny and Kingo's MO is to keep their eyes peeled for any shifty behavior. Well, if you go down there, there's some other ways. There's nothing unusual about a car waiting at the roadside. Nope, it sure isn't. But you wouldn't catch me doing that. I'm pulling all the way into a park. Backing into it, but I'm, I'm going to park fully. You stand out too much when you, even if you're not doing nothing still, it's like, I don't even want to be the center of somebody's attention when I'm on the side of the road with my lights on. In the gas on the sight of a marked Skoda raises their suspicions. Shots of fire. Kingo and Johnny try to catch up. Straight up. But the driver appears keen to avoid the interceptors. And vanishes around the corner. I don't understand why he disappeared to him. He's gone on that far. Can we go up to the main road? At 6 pm, the roads are busy. But Kingo and Johnny stay in the area, and before long, found him. There it is. Yeah. Are we going to get our first side chase? The mysterious Merc man in their sights. No, it's literally just dropped out of Eastwood. So we're behind it now. A blast of the blues, and the driver pulls over. Oh, uh, no. All right. Just about. And sure if the driver could take off again, Johnny wants to get hold of him quick. How are you doing, you all right? Oh, mate. Just wonder what you're up to. Oh, yeah. Just jump out, jump out. Sergeant Johnny G's bugbear is drink drivers. And after 14 years on the force, he's quick to cotton on to the problem here. John. You had a drink? To what? Yeah, I had a drink. Yeah. Where were they? Your car, is it? Yeah, me and my car, yeah. Yeah, I'm calling him, will you? I'm not going to run away. Yeah, I know you're not. Obviously, you're drunk, though, aren't you? So. Yeah, you can't even run. I'm expecting him to be able to run away. That's why yeah, I'm grabbing hold of you. What have you had to drink? Uh, a couple of... A couple of beers. You had more than a couple of beers, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you, yeah, I like that. You've definitely had hard liquor. Oh, my beers. Four pints. Okay. Uh, you done a breath test before? Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, I know you're at the limit, mate. <laughs> the question is, by how much? Kingo puts him to the test. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Mate, you're blowing 91. That's a fail. The legal limit's 35. All right. So yeah, this moment in time, you're under arrest. Drink dry. See, the thing about this, man, this is another thing that I don't like. It's like scammers and drunk drivers is the like like you knew you could you knew you were drunk. You clearly got out, said I'm gonna be over the limit, I'm drunk. Like why did if you have that knowledge still while under the influence, why not just Uber? Doesn't make sense. No. Yeah. Drink drivers are thought to be six times more likely to be involved in a fatal crash. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we stopped for a bit, mate, because you're spanned. At almost three times over the legal limit, this drunk driver chose to get behind the wheel with his dad in the car. And did, like, here you go again. Like, I know the last one could have been possibly a family affair, but this, you got your dad in the car? Like, what are you doing? Is he local? Yeah, we'll give him a lift, don't we? Don't we just don't go? Uh, so we'll take it. Hey, that's pretty good. What? That's coming, man. Dad drunk, too. 
with Tom Bay. Hey. And to drop dad home, Kingo and Johnny set off on the 25 minute journey to custody. Giving the driver, who, as it happens, is a fan of the interceptors, a chance for some self reflection. I love it, uh, watching every night. But the bad thing is, I always call people. They get pulled over, I always think you. Wow. <laughs> well, guess what, buddy? Now you're on an episode. I wouldn't have had them blur my. I hope your face not blurred. I can't remember if they blurred your face. Arrested for drink driving. Is required to give an evidential sample of breath on nope. the intoxilized. I wouldn't have blurred my face either if I'm on an episode. Hey, listen, let me get my little 15 minutes of fame, even though I got it in a way. That I had to not conduct myself properly. You know what I'm saying? It's a machine. Got so dice deep breath in. Yeah. And then start, start blowing. You can see that box fill up. Keep going, 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 keep going. That's it. Thank you. Take a seat. I can never do that. I don't have enough breath in me. <laughs> like, pause, first of all. Second of all. Pause again because I'm not blowing that hard. So, third of all, like, no thanks. All right. yeah. Yeah, I'm not drink way. driving so anyway. You need to do exactly the same again. Yeah. Twice? Two specimens are taken. Can I stand up then? So exactly the same again then. Hey, if one of y'all ever... Now, YouTube, I do not condone this, but if one of y'all watching ever get on this show, make sure y'all say, hey, the lit one, what's up? <laughs> because I'm watching you. I see you making a fool of yourself, one <laughs> The lower reading will be used as evidence. It'll give us a reading on that screen in the next minute. And then you know where you stand, yeah? He looks plastered. The results are in. So you've got 93 and 94. So 93 will be obviously used in evidence, okay? Still nearly three times over the limit, the drink driver will be kept in overnight to sober up. Then took your laces. No drink driver at all. Just went to the main, just thought it was alright, I wasn't going to go, obviously. Don't even tell her you get yours tickled, do you? That's normally when they catch you. When you just go out with a mate real quick down the street. Oh no, I'll be, my, I live two minutes away. That's when you get in the most accidents, and that's when you get caught by the police doing something you're not supposed to do. Having played with drink driving, he certainly learned his lesson when he was tickled with a 22-month driving ban and had to pay a total of £745 in fines and costs. I would have told him I'm homeless. I, can't, I don't got nothing. And the last year, I was involved in a couple of incidents where we were hit by drink drivers and... I don't know, I just think it's unbelievable that people still choose to do it and think they're going to get away with it, when ultimately they're going to get caught one day. We should just put, like, the blowers in everybody's car where you have to make sure you're drunk, sober to start the car. Or, like, in your push start, it can read your... I don't know, something. Still to come. With Katie. This is a long episode. It's supper time in Mansfield and Phil is crewed up with Katie. No, I am sticking to my own trip, salad. Before they get the chance to stop for a salad, one driver's slow reactions at a junction. Wets their interceptor appetite. I'm gonna have a chat with him because I don't know if he was fiddling with his phone or something about junction, but we'll see if there's any interesting scent in the vehicle. After 22 years as a cop, Phil's policing pet peeves have become drug drivers, dodgy driving, and drivers on their phones behind the wheel. And he thinks his latest spot is guilty of at least two of the three sins. Phone or what else? The why you stuck at junction, but it's probably because you had your mobile phone on you, knee, weren't it? <laughs> I know, but we shouldn't be holding it while we're driving, should we? 
holding a phone, sat nav, or tablet whilst driving is illegal and can land you with six penalty points and a two hundred pound fine. Six points. I still don't understand the points. Y'all try to explain it to me in the comments, but you know. turns out he's a takeaway driver. But Phil's not catching a whiff of fish and chips. Anything in the vehicle we shouldn't be? Yeah. Oh. Do we use anything we shouldn't do? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I do smell cannabis. Yeah, I can smell it. Yeah. When was the last time you had some? Genuinely. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. You got any on you? Uh, I've got a split. So if I say you're not gonna find any more. Yeah. With the offences starting to stack up. Yeah, I'll just take a seat on there, just push that across. Bro, I hope you don't got nobody food in the car. Would it sound like you do because you was looking at your app? Deliver my food, man, officer. The good people of Mansfield could be in for a long wait for their chippy tea. Oh, dear. Right. How often do you use cannabis? Uh, Alright, I'll be on the bottom. Right. No, it's as often as it takes. It smoke cannabis four and a half hours ago. Because there's a smell of cannabis in your vehicle, you've got cannabis on you, and you've confirmed that you smoked cannabis earlier, I'm going to require you to provide me a sample of saliva for a drugs test. I must warn you that failure or refusal is an offence for which you could be prosecuted. Do you agree to provide a sample of saliva for a drugs test? I'd rather take that chance. Like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead, you know, maybe get prosecuted. <laughs> More than 20,000 motorists were caught drug driving in the UK last year. And what I'm going to do... Take a swab down each side of your tongue, then the centre of the tongue, and then the tip of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Convictions for drug driving have almost doubled in the last four years. So what this does, this test for cannabis and cocaine. Now we suspect the cannabis because obviously you said you smoked it. Do you use any other drugs? You did. What is it? You did. Yeah, I did. I had a lot. Ooh. If it was last night, why even mention it? And ain't no way you just had one line. Boy, you've been there railing something. Hmm? A drug wipe takes eight minutes to give a result, which Phil uses to lay down the law. Right, you need to make a decision. You either want your license, at which you give the drugs up and you carry on driving, or you want to carry on using drugs, at which point you hang up your license. You can't do both, all right? Based on the drugs test, working as a delivery driver could be off the menu for the foreseeable. It is going to be a positive. Do you want to ring your gaffer just let her know you're not going to be able to complete the order? Uh, in fact, the formal part of it is uh, you're under arrest on suspicion of driving this motor vehicle whilst over the specified limit for cocaine and cannabis. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned some which later on in court. And if you do say maybe give an evidence, and I'm also arresting your suspicion of possession of controlled drug believed to be cannabis, okay? I can't even get my meal, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to eat. It's like, come on. After an awkward call to the chip shop boss, <laughs> the drug dog takeaway driver is delivered to custody. Ultimately, if his blood's come back as he's over the limit, then he's looking to lose his license for 12 months, uh, which will have a knock on the face. This is one thing I'm not doing. Like, y'all might think this is minuscule, but as a tall person, I'm going to wait until the garage opens fully. I'm not bending down. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not in a rush to go get arrested. No, I'm going to wait. Sorry, bud. Then he's looking to lose his license for 12 months, uh, which will have a knock on the fate because if he's a delivery driver, I'm not going to uh, carry on doing that. But he's also got the knock-on effect of the business he's working for because he was the only delivery driver today, so we took him uh, off the road. Uh, so they're going to lose business. They're not going to be able to provide uh, food to people. And it might be that those people then go elsewhere, so the, the business loses out. Um, so, yeah, it's a big, big knock-on effect from one person's selfishness for, for using drugs whilst driving. And not only the fact that, but putting everybody else in danger from driving whilst under the influence or over these specified limits. Not even mad at you, my boy. I, but although I would argue on, on booger sugar, you might be a little more dialed in, paying attention a little bit more. You might be even better at driving. But I do not condone it, YouTube. There is no way. Delivery driver was proved to be over the limit for cocaine and cannabis. 
After his conviction at court for drug driving and possession of a Class B drug, he lost his driving license for 23 of months. Two years. He also had to pay a total of four hundred and seven pounds in costs and fines. Look at—he looked like he <laughs> biting down. No cap, I would have probably ate it. The food, like, why not, man? TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Don't forget, man, go to that Instagram and do that for me, man.